Okay, so here we have the Langa and Sona 1815 chronograph in white gold. Um, and I'm going to just show you what you get with this thing and walk you through the watch a little bit. So Langa gives these uh, nice leather wallets and inside you find the manual for the watch. And this is sort of your service book. So you've got in, uh, the stamp from the dealer and um, all of your services marked in here. Um, we'll toss that to the side. And here's the box. So Lunga has these cool boxes um, where uh, you take this kind of outer sleeve off and then this is uh, cut so that when you open it up, you get their logo right there. Again, it's really nice um, leather and very heavy and this nice heavy uh, gold um, button to open it up. So let's uh, open it up. All right, and here we have the watch. So again, this is the white gold version and this is the older version. Um, more recently, they've uh, made a new dial that doesn't have this outer scale. Um, and it's a little bit more plain. I actually prefer this one. It's got a little bit more going on and it's a little more interesting. Um, also note that this uh, strap is not original. This is actually from Hodinki. It's one of their really cool leather straps. And I like to wear the watch on this. It dresses it down a little bit. The watch normally comes on a black croc strap. Um, anyway, here you have the watch. It's white gold. Um, you can see there's this uh, very classic Langa case that has this uh, satin finish center portion. And then these, this polished top and back. Um, it's a manual wine two registered chronograph so uh, very much in a vintage style um, and has these beautiful blue hands um, on this silver dial. Um, outside you have this scale um, it says here graduated for 30 pulsations so this is actually a scale for pulse um, and you can run the chronograph and you count um, somebody's pulse, you count to 30 um, pulses, and then you stop it. And you can read after you hear 30 pulses wherever it stops is their heartbeats per minute. So obviously if it stopped at 30, that's one per second, which is 60. Um, and that was a very uh, classic use of a chronograph in vintage watches. So it's sort of um, a throwback to that. Um, I love on this watch the, the chronograph seconds register. Uh, this hand that comes down there is really beautiful. Um, again, it's manual wind, so let's wind it up a little bit. Um, Lange is famous for having like amazing feel to their winding, to the button pushing. Um, the watch just feels like really, really luxurious and rich. Um, and obviously it's something that they put thought into. Um, also, you can see just the finishing on the dial and how these different surfaces glow. Um, the blue, when it catches the light, it just really shimmers and is amazing. Um, but now that we've got it started, you can see uh, the coolest feature of the Langa chronograph movements is an instantaneous jumping minutes. So I'll start it here. Man, that's so smooth. And then as it goes, normally a chronograph minute hand moves a little bit while the second hand moves and it sort of goes to one minute, just like the minute hand of the watch would go to one minute, you know, um, basically a fraction of a second at a time. So it's gradual. These longer chronograph movements have an instantaneous minute function. So you'll see when it comes around to one minute, um, instead of gradually going, it'll jump to one minute counted all at once, uh, which actually is a really great feature and makes the chronograph a lot easier to use um, because you'll see like here, when it starts getting to 50 seconds or something, um, it gets confusing whether it would be a minute and 50 seconds or just 50 seconds on another chronograph because the minute counter would be pointed to one. Um, but here, watch it, right? Boom. Um, so that's really cool. 
And then uh, it's also a flyback chronograph. You see that written there, which means that you can um, zero it while it's still going. So imagine you're timing a couple different things um, and you hit this boop, and it goes, but it keeps going. So it just goes and starts. You don't have to start, stop, reset, start again. Um, you just fly back. The other really practical use for that is it makes it very difficult to break the chronograph. Um, on chronographs that are non-flybacks, if you hit the reset while it's running, you can jam up the whole mechanism. Um, and so this mitigates that. Um, so now let's look at the real superstar of this watch. And that is, boom. So that movement's about as good as it gets in watchmaking. Um, man. So there you can see the column wheel for the chronograph, obviously. Um, you can see the finishing is just absolutely tip, tip, top notch. Um, and look at that depth of the movement. You have all these blued screws and the rubies are in gold chatons. It's very, very traditional movement finishing. Of course, Lange uses German silver for all their movements. Um, so very, very high end. And then you notice on the balance cock, there's uh, engraving and every uh, Lange watch has uh, unique engraving on the balance cock. So uh, that's pretty cool. But yeah, most of the owners of these watches wish they could wear them back side up and just stare at this movement all the time because um, it's really pretty much to die for. So there you have it. That's the Longa 1815 chronograph. Um, it's the same movement, by the way, as the datagraph, except it just doesn't have the big date. Um, but everything else about it is the same. Uh, and actually, I prefer this to the datagraph. Um, mainly because the case is a little bit slimmer and I feel that the proportions on this one are just kind of perfect. I used to own a datagraph and it's just a, a hair thicker and it feels a little bit boxy compared to this, which is just really sleek. Um, and this silver dial and blued hands is a really great combination also. So there's the 1815 chronograph.